Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you an advanced way of controlling your camera. We are using a Panasonic GH4 and a couple of Blackmagic cameras and uh, using this small device here we are able to control the camera functions remotely. You see the GH4, you see there is no wire attached to it other than the uh, HDMI standard cable and I will show you on my screen how it works. On this remote, we are using right now only three channels to control all the camera functions. So we could map several more channels, but three is enough for, for the functions that we have mapped on it right now and that we are currently uh, using. This switch here, this is a six position switch. And we have mapped on each of these switch positions a function of the camera. Right now it is set on Aperture. You can see here we have now 3.2 and I'm going to change this. Now it's 2.8, 2 and you can also see the, the exposure changing. I'm going to go back. Now let's play with the shutter speed. The second function here is the shutter speed. You see now it's 60. And again, I'm able to control it with a remote control. The third function that we have mapped here, it's the ISO. You see it right here. I'm gonna change it. It's now 200. 800. Let's put it back to 400. The fourth function that we mapped here is the focus control. You see now uh, the, the blue edge here, this is the focus peaking of the GH4 and I'm going to move the focus away from where it is right now. You see now it is out of focus. So the focus is somewhere really away. Now it's, it's over there, I'm going to bring it back bit by bit until it's back on, on the other the copter. Okay, this, is the, this was the focus. The, the next function is zoom control, but on this gimbal we do not have any, first of all, we do not have a power zoom lens. If we had a power zoom lens, this would allow us to control the, uh, the lens. Uh, I will show the zoom later on a Blackmagic camera. Uh, and the sixth function that, that we have mapped is, the, is a photo function. But before I show you the photo function, I'm going to show you how uh, we trigger the recording on the camera. You can see now that it is, uh, it is rolling. And you, we can still adjust all of this while the re uh, recording is on. So I'm going to change the aperture. Okay, I'm going to stop recording now and I'm going to switch to the photo mode. This switch, which previously was starting and stopping the, the recording, will now trigger the, the photo. But in order to do this, you have to set the camera on, the, on a different mode. Right now it's, it's on the creative mode, I think it's called. And you'll, I hope you'll see the, sh we'll hear the shutter right now as it triggers. The camera is set now on bracketing, and every time I, I flip the switch, it triggers the shutter. Now uh, another function which I am, I am unable to show to you right now is a time lapse, time lapse function. Uh, this here is a three position switch. And uh, when you use the first, the second position, it will trigger the photo, the shutter one time. When you uh, switch to the third position, it will uh, start a time lapse. But uh, we will show show that in a in a separate video. Um, let's talk a, a little bit more now about the remote control and how these channels are mapped to uh, to it. We have a 16, I'm going to rotate the frame for you.
So this here is a 16 channel S bus receiver. And Zenmus is causing a little bit of noise. Now this is the only receiver that we have on this entire frame and using this only receiver we are controlling all the, the UAV functions. So flying, gimbal movement and camera functions. Um, for flying we are using 9 channels of the 16. So we have the, the 4 uh, basic channels, then you have the flight mode, then Sixth, we have the intelligent orientation control. Seventh, we have the retracts control. Eighth, we have the uh, go back, uh, return to home uh, switch. And uh, ninth, we have the uh, cruise control, which is a feature of uh, A2, DJA2, which is uh, present on this, uh, this frame. So, 9 of the 16 channels are used for flying. We, are, we have another 7 channels, which uh, are as follows. 4 of these 7 channels are used by the Zenmus. So, we have the 3 uh, pitch, roll and uh, yaw control of the Zenmus. And the 4th is, uh, um, is the mode control of the Zenmus. And the other three remaining channels, so we had 9 plus, plus 4, 13, we have three remaining channels that I showed to you how they work to control the, the camera. This is in fact why we, we, only, we are only using three channels. We could use more channels and make it more user-friendly to control the camera functions, but we wanted to be able to use the other channels for really uh, important functions like gimbal movement and of course flying. Now, I'm going to show to you that we in fact have these two remote controls. This one with the red switch, this is the master uh, remote control. So in fact, this is the only remote control that is communicating to the receiver. This remote control connects to the, is the slave one and connects to the, the master one. And the channels for the camera control and gimbal control are routed through this, uh, this master remote control. So, in other words, this will, would allow you, if uh, you want to do a one-man job, from one single remote control, you can have control of all those 16 functions that uh, I told you. So including gimbal control and camera control if you, if you can do that. But since we are uh, two people operating, uh, we also have the second, uh, second remote control for gimbal functions. And in case you didn't see this, types of, uh, this type of remote control, so both the, the receiver and the remote controls are uh, FR Sky, and uh, they are uh, really cheap in comparison to Futaba or Spectrum or Graupner. So uh, they are not uh, not at all as uh, as expensive as you would normally expect from a, a remote control. Uh, we've been using them for uh, almost two years now, and we never had any issue with them. In fact, we are a group of people here who are flying different sorts of uh, uh, frames and we all use uh, FR Sky. Before this we, we used Spectrum, but uh, we realized that this is a lot more flexible. And uh, uh, it's uh, not only about the price, it's also about the software that runs on this uh, remote controls which is uh, OpenTX and uh, it's an open source software which is very flexible and it allows you to do whatever you want with the, uh, the remote control. Now to bring you back to the small device here so again this is what in fact is controlling the, uh, the camera this is connected to the S bus receiver and receives all the channels 
uh, sent by the remote control. In fact, the SBUS channels are split. One cable goes up in the flight controller and the second one goes into uh, the camera controller. And uh, we also have four P PWM uh, channels that go into the uh, Zenius. This time we are on a completely different setup, but the controller that we are using is, is the same. And uh, we have mapped the zoom on this slider here, on the side. And if you take a look at the screen, you can probably also hear the servo motor working. And you can also see the, the lens and the belt. We have set it in such way that it works as smooth as possible. With other zoom systems we always had an issue that it was working uh, uh, not so smooth, it was uh, too fast or it was not uh, linear enough. Um, since we now use a black magic, so it's no longer the GH4, uh, we also enable some functions that uh, black magic has. Like for instance, now I can control the aperture here. You can see the screen going dark, and by the f by flipping this switch, I will uh, enable the auto iris auto iris so you can see now the exposure is is done correctly this also works on on focus so you can the same manner you can control the focus from the black magic and by flipping the same switch uh, we command the auto focus um, this gimbal it's a completely different one uh, it's no longer a Zenmus, it's an Alex Moss setup. It is a custom built uh, gimbal. And um, it works on a completely different controller, flight controller. Before it was DJI 2, now it's zero UAV. So, in other words, we have the same two remote setup that worked on the previous frame. Uh, working on this other frame which has completely different components. The frame that you see here is uh, our biggest frame. Normally we would use it with uh, the bigger Blackmagic cameras or with a Red Epic, but uh, in this case we have mounted the, the smaller the pocket camera uh, just because uh, it enables us to have uh, really long long flights, like half an hour flights, and uh, we can also put the, the GH4 in the same manner on this frame and have uh, uh, the ability to fly for somewhere around half an hour. We call this camera controller IntelliG. This is a, we could call it a code name. Uh, normally we do not uh, uh, we everything that we build we build for our own use and uh, whenever we can we can we also share what we learn with other people uh, I would be curious we would be curious to know uh, if you guys think this device would be useful for what you you are doing I know we are we uh, we try to Push things. We uh, we don't like uh, having our hands tied to our back when we are flying, and we have no control over the camera. And we hate when we have to land and uh, make some small, small adjustments and then uh, take off again. But uh, I do not know if this uh, is seen as helpful as we see it by by other people. And uh, to be honest, we don't know if this would be something that would worth uh, producing in, uh, in more copies. So right now we, we only have 
uh, a few. Actually, this is the only one with uh, with the nice box on it. Uh, the rest is just the uh, the electronic device mounted up on uh, on the other frames that that we fly with. So, if you find this useful and if you'd like to to have such a such a controller, please uh, write to us. We are going to post uh, some URLs uh, in the video description and maybe also on the video itself to for you to know uh, where to to go and uh, send us uh, your feedback. Thank you.